we've seen that to every matrix, there's two canonical subspaces that we're interested in, the column space and the null space. Now, I want to show how the column space and the null space, in particular their dimensions, are going to be related. And to do that, I'm going to introduce a new concept, a new name called the rank of a matrix, which is just a bit of shorthand to make our lives a little bit easier. So here's a matrix. Generically, our matrices are going to be M by N. In this case, it's 4 by 4. And I note that in this matrix, some of the columns will be ones with leading ones, and some of the columns will be free ones. So in this case, we've got the two here, which have leading ones, and we've got another two here, which are free. And then, as we've seen in the prior video, the number of leading ones is the dimension of the column space, the number of free variables is the dimension of the null space. Now, I need to find a little bit of new notation here called the rank. And R, or the rank of a matrix A, is just a shorthand for the number of leading ones. We talk about the number of leading ones all the time, so we have this shorthand for it. Now, the reason why I want to look at it is because if I look at the dimension of the column space, or in other words, the number of leading ones, that's just R. But then if I look at the number of free columns, there's a total of n possible columns. R of them have leading ones, and so n minus R are free columns. As in, I've divided up all of the n into R and n minus R, and of course, n minus R plus R are just equal to n. So this tells me the dimension theorem, and it is the following. It says that the dimension of the column space added to the dimension of the null space has to add up to equal to n, as in the number of columns in an m by n matrix. Well, this is kind of interesting. It might seem surprising. Remember, vectors in the null space, those were coming from the domain. They were the vectors that, in the domain that would get killed off. Vectors in the column space are all the targets, are all the things in the codomain. So it's kind of interesting that you take this subspace which lives in the domain, you add its dimension to the dimension of this subspace in this codomain, and they add up to n, the number of columns in your matrix. We can see this visually as follows. Here I've got this matrix that we've seen several times before. It's the one that goes like this. It squishes everything down in this kind of funny way onto the x-axis. Now, this matrix has one column with a leading one and one free column. So in other words, its dimension of its column space, its dimension of its null space, they're both one and then they add up to two, which is the n for this particular matrix. So let's try to see how that's going to work. First thing, you might recall from the past that there was this entire line here of vectors, all of whom are going to go to zero. So all of these vectors are going to be squished down to the zero vector when I apply by a, and so I can say the dimension of my null space is one because I have this entire line that's going to squish down. So I say the dimension of the null space here is just one. Now, okay, let's apply our transformation. Everything goes, all the green vectors, that line squishes down to zero. But what about the dimension of the column space? Remember, the dimension of the column space is all of the targets. It's, it's actually this x-axis. The x-axis are all of the points that are hit by this transformation. The x-axis is a line, and so the dimension of the column space is also going to be 1. The dimension of the null space is the dimension of the column space, 1 plus 1. This is going to add up to be equal to 2. So we've seen that in this example, we have a transformation from two-dimensional space to two-dimensional space, and then we get this sort of splitting where the n equal to 2 here splits where one of the dimensions goes into the null space, the stuff that's killed off, and one of the dimension goes into the column space, the target, and the sum of those is just going to be equal to 2.